I think we're live now. Hi, I'm George Cow, and today I am with Jason Schneider. He's one of my clients, and he is an NLP expert. Uh, if you don't know about NLP, you're going to learn a lot in this uh, video, Neuro Linguistic Programming. And specifically, there is a, uh, a particular a school within, I would say it's more of a kind of an advanced version of NLP called Neurosemantics. And Jason knows a lot about it. In fact, not only does he, does, has he been you know, trained uh, in the advanced um, techniques of neuro, uh, NLP and neurosemantics, he's now become the president of the Institute of Neurosemantics in the USA. So uh, anyway, we're doing a Facebook Live because when Jason and I get together, we have a lot of fun and we were having some, I was having trouble pre-recording this. <laughs> I, was, I, kept, I kept screwing up what I was saying. So we thought, let's go live because then, um, it's okay if we screw up, but I, I feel like I'm less likely to screw up. There's maybe some NLP stuff there that you can talk about, Jason. But anyway, Jason, I want to say hi to you before we go on. Hi, hi. Thanks for having yeah. me on here live. Yeah, it's it's great fun to be here with you. So if anybody happens to be watching live, please feel free to comment below. Um, otherwise, as you watch this, I'd love to know what you're learning. Uh, do you know NLP? Do you, have you, are you familiar with it? What do you think about it? Feel free to comment below. So, Jason, what I'd love for you, and you're gonna, uh, Jason, you're gonna um, teach us something about, uh, I think one of the techniques, one or two of the techniques that that you you love to share. But before we go there, um, and also you're gonna describe what neurosemantics is. But before we do that, I always like to have my clients share, like you know, maybe two, uh, one or two or three business lessons that that they've learned in the past year. So. In the past year, um, it doesn't necessarily have to be the past year, but just is there any kind of business um, advice that you found particularly helpful or some kind of insight that you thought, you know, if only I knew this uh, when, I, when I was, you know, just starting out in business or uh, something that might be helpful for other business owners? Yeah, definitely. I, I was actually uh, thinking about this the other day because I was meeting with one of my clients who's just getting started out with, with her business, and we were talking about this, this exact question. And, um, and you know, it's, it, it, to me, it seems kind of so obvious now, but at the time, um, it was like, I spent so many years in the beginning when I first started out. I've been in business now uh, training NLP and coaching using NLP and neurosemantics since 2010. And, and for the first at least five to seven years, I spent the majority of my time um, like hiding behind the computer, you know? So, um, you know, um, building the website, learning how to do WordPress, uh, learning about cool new plugins for the website and softwares and pixels and, and like any kind of graphic design, anything that would keep me from actually like interfacing with people. And, and, and so, um, you know, one of the things that really, when I made the shift from like hiding behind the screen and doing all this computer stuff and techie stuff and graphic design stuff, and I shifted to like actually interacting and engaging with people, building relationships, um, testing out my, my services, giving out free sessions, that that was like a, a really just a total big transition. I see so many people still doing that now, like, uh, oh, I'm gonna set up, I'm gonna spend this month setting up my, my Google Pixel. And I'm like, no, 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 please don't do that. <laughs> Get out and, and, um, and, and, and start interfacing with people, post some stuff on social media, schedule calls with people who might be prospective clients or might be good referral sources or just friends or family members who would be open to experience the type of service that you're offering so that you can get feedback. And, and, and through inter interfacing with these people is how, how you learn what works, what doesn't work. And, you, you know, it's like, and doing that from a, a, of an authentic place, of like seeking to be of service, um, seeking to connect, not, not for the purpose of, you know, not for the ends of getting more business. That's also kind of like an ironic thing. It's like when I let go of like, I need this sale, I need more clients. I need, and it was more like, well, let me just reach out to people and connect with people from my heart and give and be of service and be, be more generous that, um, you know, I, I started to find that a lot, a lot more people were, a lot more clients were signing up and coming to me. So that was a really mm -hmm. big learning, um, really this last, last year and a half with you. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you for, 
for sharing. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I think if we aren't in meaningful contact with our audience, with our prospective clients, with our with our you know content engagers, or just just being in contact with people, uh, everything else is just preparation. And the preparation sometimes we could be preparing for the rest of our lives and not actually be be doing business or in business, which is in co meaningful contact with others. So thank you, thank you. So why do you, so if, if we can go on this for another minute, why do you think people are 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 not doing it? Are they scared to do it? Are they why why don't you think they're 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 doing that? And what's maybe an encouragement or you know tip you can give them? Yeah, um, I think there's a, there's a couple of reasons um, that I'm that I've been aware of. So one of the things that I've seen is that one of it is that it's, it's like a perfectionism pattern. So it's like I need my website to be perfect before I can share it with people. You know, how many times, I don't know how many times, you know, I, it's been me a million times and still I schedule meetings with people or you meet someone and they give you their business card with their website on, they say, but it's not ready yet. And so, and it's like, now I realize, well, it's never ready. <laughs> it's never done. It's like, it's always going to be a work in progress. And so that's kind of a thing of encouragement for people. It's like, well, nobody's website is ever ready. If you're a solopreneur, if you're just getting started, if you're been in business for 10 years or 20 years, it's like, if there's always somewhere else to go. And so it's kind of just like being accepting of where it is and, and you're going to, that's where you are. It's like being, that's authenticity. It's like, this is where, this is me right now. It's not always going to be me. And I'm, I'm more than that, my website. I'm going to be more, but let's, let's talk and let's see where we are. So it's like, just, the perfectionism pattern yeah. and just kind of shifting from the, this is a video I have on YouTube, but it's shifting the, from the perfectionist mindset to the optimization mindset. Love so that. rather okay. than I'll, I'll share it with people when I'm ready. It's like, I'll give myself a month to work on this, two weeks to work on this, one week to work on this, two months to whatever time limit that you, you know, obviously you want to be, feel comfortable with where you're at, depending on yourself, but give yourself a time limit. And then you'll say, rather than it'll be, per when it's perfect, I'll share it with people, say, I'll, I'll optimize myself to do the best that I can in this time frame. And then when that day's over, that was the best it could be. Now it's time to, to launch so I can get feedback so I can optimize for the next, next stage. Love it, love it, so love that's it. one thing, yeah. And, and another thing is that I think a lot of people just don't know, which is like just knowing. It's like a lot of people think that they need to set up a funnel or like a, build a build an online course platform learning management system in order to sell an online course and it's like it's just i think people are just misinformed or, or they're just not aware that it's like that all that i mean how many i don't know how many things i've set up on the website that i've never used that i just never use it i spent i spent a month learning how to set it up and how to work it and all the intricacies and then a year goes by and i renew the software again and i never and it's like just talking to people yeah <laughs> connecting totally. with people <laughs> that's brilliant yeah yeah it can be really simple and we should keep it as simple as possible and i always tell people yeah i mean just look at what how i do things i try to keep things super simple you know in terms of my software and things okay let's get into the thing that you've been you know studying and working with people on for years which is neurosemantics so can you for those who aren't familiar with it uh maybe you could give us a little bit of your definition of nlp and then how is neurosemantics different from NLP or the same or, you know? Yeah, so, so the way I, I like to simply explain it is that NLP at its most basic foundation is just a model of how communication works. So it's a model of, of, of interpersonal communication like we're doing now, uh, but it also models intrapersonal communication. So how your mind is communicating with your body all day long. And if you think about it, it's like that's, on some level, almost everything is communication. All information is communication. And so, and so really NLP is a model about how we take in information through our senses. We create a, a model of the thing out there. We take it in, we filter it down, we make a model of it, and then how we respond to the model that we've made. And so, you know, it's, it's a model of how subjective experience works. And then how we take those subjective experiences and then we communicate them with others. So hopefully other people can understand us and connect with us and, and, and ultimately be either led by us or allow ourselves to be led by others. And this is where, for those who barely know anything about NLP, you know, we might have heard of NLP is basically like a persuasion technique and to, to be able to like, you know, 
Jedi somebody or <laughs> into doing stuff for you. But to, 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 I'll talk to talk about that part of it. Yeah. So, well, I mean, like, so NLP, another definition of NLP is that NLP is the study of human excellence. Because like, like I said, it's a study of, it's a model of communication. And so everything that we do is governed by some sort of mental communication, some sort of communication from our mind to our body telling us how to do that. And so, and so, well, if you, you know, when NLP started, like, originally it was a model of these three really successful therapists and so in the beginning it was like a model of how to do therapy exceptionally well uh, using certain sorts of linguistics and then ultimately it became a model of modeling excellence i hope i'm not getting too confusing here <laughs> so so they modeled the excellence of these therapists but what they realized is that that okay we modeled these therapists but what we have is so much more than the results of that modeling what we have is a model for how to model excellent people. Mm. And so, and so, well, some people went out and they modeled how to do that and how to be very influential or how to be the best, um, you know, win friends and influence people and how to, and so, and kind of like, or how to date, you know, pick up women or pick up men better using NLP or how to sell better and without people knowing it. And so, there's lots of ways that you can apply this technology. And that's kind of where, 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 where neurosemantics comes in, I think, or at least the way that I, I see it. Because like neurosemantics comes along and, and um, you know, neurosemantics, whereas NLP focuses mostly on, like I said, we, we, we experience the world, we filter it through our senses and we end up with this like model of it. Um, and, and obviously the model, the, you could never know the thing itself. It, you have to filter it through you. <laughs> and so all we end up, the most you'll ever have is a perception of the thing. Like even right now, what you're looking at is a model of us having this conversation on a screen. You're not even here. And that's a model. And so, um, and so the best we can ever do is respond to our models. We could never know the thing itself because it has to convert to information and get mapped in our neurology. And so we're, you know, so, so anyways, um, so we can use this to model, like I said, sales or therapy or leadership, and you can use it to model lots of things. And, and so when I started doing this and I started modeling, you know, understanding how to model excellence from all these different fields and all these amazing people I was meeting. And, and even from my past, we all have like expressions of excellence that we can model more in ourselves, which is something that I hope to talk about later on in the conversation. But, but I think like one of the questions that I had is like, so what's the point? If I could change anything to anything and think anything about anything and feel anything about anything, then what is the point of all this? And, and that's where neurosemantics went out and they modeled self-actualization, which is kind of like the, that's the, the big picture dome is like, why would I achieve any goal? You know, you, some people want a goal, but it's pulling them away from what they really need in life to actualize their best potential. And so, you know, kind of neurosemantics comes along and says, well, what's the potential of human beings? And, and let's look at how we can model self-actualizing people, people who are, who are actualizing themselves to become more real, more authentic, um, to become the best version of themselves compared to themselves. And, um, and, how, and then within that framework, within that largest frame, now we can model, maybe you need to learn how to sell better. Maybe you need to learn how to relate with others better. Maybe you want to learn how to communicate better or coach better. So, um, so neurosemantics right. now deals, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's really helpful. I mean, yeah, I feel like this is the clearest I've been on both NLP and neurosemantics. So thank you for, for explaining that. So one of the many techniques within is it narrow semantics or NLP is about harvesting our peak experiences. Um, tell us about that and why that's important. Yeah. So, so all the way back from NLP, like one of the earliest uh, or one of the earlier models of NLP is, is talking about how, you know, one of the core questions of NLP is like when someone's experiencing an emotional state, uh, whether it's uh, resourceful for them or unresourceful, the question is not like, why am I like this? Why do I have this? But the question is, is how do I do this? So it's like, <laughs> right. So, so it's like, because the idea is that people feel like they're passively in response to their emotions. Like I'm, I'm at the whim of my emotions. 
but when you frame it's like how do you how do you do that you know george how do you how do you experience uh, joyful productivity how do you do that that's amazing you do that how do you do that it's like it puts us in a in a meta position in a it puts us above our above our emotions it's like i'm doing my emotions and through like recognizing or taking ownership that I'm the one doing my experiences, now we can start to have more control to do more of the ones that we want to do more of and to do less of the ones that we want to do less of. And so, so that comes all the way back from NLP. It's like um, we have experiences. And the question is, how do you do that experience? Because if it serves you, well, let's do that more. And if it doesn't serve you, well, let's do that less. Stop practicing. If it's not... You know, you know, I was having a conversation with a client yesterday and she, I was like, um, I was talking, I was like, well, what's the recipe for that emotion? What's the recipe? How do you do that? And, and, and then we started using that metaphor. And it's like, oh, that recipe was passed down from your grandmother. Oh, it's like an old family recipe. <laughs> but it was like an unresourceful emotion. So it's like, oh, so you've been just doing that recipe that your grandma taught your mom who taught you how to do that recipe to cook up that emotion. How do you do that? And, and maybe you want to cook up something different? How could we, how do you cook up uh, joy? How do you cook up peace? How do you cook up calmness? How do you cook up awe oh, and amazement? So, so all the way back from NLP, we started talking about understanding how do you do your, your states? And so coming back to like self-actualization and neurosemantics, and, and like thinking about this larger frame of like, how do I become more real, more authentic? And so Michael Hall, uh, one of the co-founders of Neurosemantics, he did a lot of study into self-actualizing people, self-actualizers. And one of the characteristics of self-actualizing people is that they have more and more peak experiences. And so kind of to define a peak experience, it's like, um, it, it's, it's very similar with um, peak performance in a way. Like peak performances can be like peak experiences where you're, you're challenged a little bit beyond your, what you've been able to do before. And through that moment, that's what a peak, a, a peak of performance is. Like you're challenged just a little bit more than you thought you were capable of. And so you're called to become more. And you, you rise to the occasion and you, 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 you do that and you're there. And it's like this, this space disappears, time disappears, self disappears, and you are just performing you're you're at your best and so that's kind of like a peak performance and peak experiences can be experiences like kind of like um i was telling you earlier i had a client yesterday who used to have a phobia of having his head underwater so he couldn't swim or bathe or even take a shower um, with the water on his head was a was a not going to happen for him and so he was able to overcome that using nlp and so we were talking um, about it yesterday in the session, and he was telling me, he was saying, um, you know, every once in a while, when I, um, when I take a shower, and I'm just in there, and I'm, I'm allowing the water to come over my head, he's like, I just, like, get into this state, it's just, I'm just, it's unbelievable. It's like, it's just, I can't believe that I overcame this, and that this is who I am now, you know? And he was saying, yeah, but that only happens, like, once every three or four months. <laughs> and so I'm going, wait, 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 you know, if, you know, yes, it happens if you, you know, if it just let it, if you wait for your experiences to happen, kind of like you're passive in life and you wait for those experiences to come, then, well, yeah, maybe it happens once every three, four months, but wouldn't that be something that you would want to practice more often, that peak experience? And so the, you know, and so, so what, what I did and what I, what I can tell you guys to do, um, George, you, and also whoever's watching this, whenever you're watching this, wherever you're watching this, is that, that, that so these peak experiences, and we all have them, it might be, um, you know, that day when you realize that you're, you know, um, that you, you found your calling. Or it might be that day when you were just like walking down the street and like you were just feeling like, like you're walking on air, like everything is amazing. Or it might be your, the, your wedding day or like holding your child for the first time or, or whatever that, that experience is for you, these peak experiences in, in your life. And everybody has at least a couple of them, I'm sure. You know, you might have to dig and look and find, but, 
but everybody has a couple of them. And, and if you have a moment now, you could even begin to look inside and find one now, right? What would be of that list that I said, maybe there's one of those types of experiences that really resonated with you. You said, yeah, you know what? Like that first day when I held my child or, or um, you know, I, I remember when I, I, that moment when I realized that I had a purpose more, more than I thought I did. Or, you know, it might be a graduation day and you're like, I, I did it. And so, you know, what we can do is we can practice those experiences and harvest them and nurture them and grow them so that we can practice them more often because, see, he had it once every three months. But, you know, if he practiced it, let's, and that was his automatic pattern, was, that was his habit or his system in his life, even though it was unconscious, was like once every three months that happens to me. That's automatic. It just happens to me. But through practice, what can happen is you, if you practice it, let's say every day or every week, or twice a week, or once a month even, that you're, the more you practice it, the more automatically that will become, it's like, well, I just automatically experience that every day. Like I can imagine for you and those, you know, your fans or your audience who watch you, like they, they watch you and they're in awe of how you can just be joyfully productive. But I, I, I can imagine that you weren't born a joyfully productive person. That this yeah, is something no, that you've harvested and practiced, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I think you're right. I think I think I probably do that without realizing I'm doing it. Or I mean you're and putting and, it that's the, and that's the goal. And that's yeah. the goal is that you yeah. practice it until you do it to the point where you don't even have to think about it anymore. Right. Right. And but like you're putting the language and the step by step technique, mm -hmm. right? Which is what you're saying in neurosemantics is studying how self-actualizers do it and we all you know we all have some self-actualizing capabilities and practices but neurosemantics is studying that and then actually teaching it um so how do you practice how do you practice a peak experience and maybe you could walk us through a little bit of that and i, I realize we should probably end this end this interview pretty soon but uh, anything you want to say about that yeah definitely and so it's really really simple actually um so the way to do it is to basically you harvest it from your memories. So first step is, step number one, remember a peak experience. When was a time in your life when you had a peak experience? It doesn't have to be the right one. It doesn't have to be the best one. It could be any one. Just pick one for now and practice the process. And then once you learn the process, you can do it with other peak experiences and harvest those ones as well, right? So think through your memory, you know, comb through your memory and find one, one peak experience to work with. So that's step number one. Okay, step number two is when you remember memories, and this is a pretty cool thing from NLP, I love teaching this to people. When you remember memories, there's only two ways that you can encode them, basically. Okay, and some people tend to encode them one way and some people tend to encode them the other way. So I'll just give you the answer now. So one way to encode them is you encode them just like you're encoding this now, like you're, like you're there. So like, like you're looking through your own eyes, you're hearing what you heard in that moment, you're feeling what you felt in that moment. It's like you put on a virtual reality helmet and you flew back to that time and you're in that experience. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. and, and the other way to do it, which, which all of us tend to do both, you know, some more than the other, is that we remember them as if we were, like there was a video camera watching us. And so it's like you see that, you see yourself having a peak experience. And so, and so when you remember it, it's going to be encoded one of those two ways. Either it's going to be like, I'm there again, and, and, or it's going to be like, ah, oh, yeah, I see myself having that experience. That was so cool. So in order to harvest an experience, we need to get inside to that experience. So go inside, see what you saw, hear what you heard, and feel the feelings that you were having in that peak experience. And that's how you'll, again, call up those emotions, right? So, so step number one, remember a time. Step number two, step into it as if you're there now. See what you saw, hear what you heard, feel that those feelings of that peak experience as if you're there now. Recall that memory as vividly and realistically as possible. That's step number two. Now, if you're in step number two and you've followed those two simple steps properly, you should already be feeling the peak experience right now, right here, wherever you're sitting, wherever you're standing, whatever you're doing, right? So that's pretty cool. Okay. Step number three, what I recommend is that you just take a little bit of, take a moment and do some like internal inventory. So you're like, when I'm in this peak experience, how's my breathing? Like, am I breathing in my stomach? Am I breathing in my chest? Am I breathing in my shoulders? 
how's my heart rate? Is it faster? Is it slower than normal? Is it just normal? Um, what's my muscle tension like? Do I have any, like, do, do I, do I like have to adjust myself in the chair to get into it, right? Do I have to get more better? Do I lean in? Do I lean back? Um, what's my muscle tension in my face or relax? Like, how do I do my face when I'm in that state? Um, what's it like to look through the eyes of that state? And if you have any self-talk in your head, like, is there or is there not? And if there is, like, what's the tone of voice, the speed of voice, the volume of the voice? And what are you saying to yourself? What are you believing in the back of your mind while you're there? And, and so through doing this kind of what I call an internal inventory, you start to give yourself um, clues or cues or triggers that will either you can use them to recall the state or they'll be reminders like, of, oh, yeah, I'm there fully or oh, I'm only there halfway. Let me get in there fully. Ah, yes, now I'm there fully. And so so third step is just take a little bit of an internal inventory. How's your breathing? What's your muscle tension like? What's your self-talk like? What are your gestures like? What's your posture like? So that you can know when you're in that state. And then the last step is either to imagine having this in the future. So our brain doesn't know the difference. Um, it, you know, like I said, all you're doing all day long is you're modeling reality. So all you ever know really are your models. And we've all been in a dream so vividly, that, so vivid that you wake up and you're like, oh my goodness, I couldn't believe that was a dream. And so one way we can install these peak performance states in our future is through men mental rehearsal. And so kind of like maybe you imagine yourself doing this, um, using this state while you're Maybe when, when do you want to have more peak states in your life? And, and now mentally rehearse stepping into them and having them there. And, and then kind of go back to the beginning of the movie and go back in and mentally rehearse stepping into it and having it there. And so, you know, that's one way we could bring this into your future is just to practice having it in future scenarios where you'd like to have more peak experiences. And that will help to kind of automate it if you link it up with the triggers of that, like the cues of that environment. It's like, as soon as I walk through the door of my house, I'm going to feel that and practice it or, you know, um, and then the, the last thing I'll say is literally to set a practice schedule. So maybe you want to practice peaking, <laughs> practice peaking, um, maybe once a day for five minutes or two minutes, or maybe once a week, every Sunday morning, first thing I do when I wake up is I harvest a peak experience. And so that's a great way that you can, and the more you do that, like I said, you know, maybe you'll have, maybe, maybe you have one, you're like, oh, I had one once in 1998, you know? <laughs> so it's like, if that's the last time you had a peak experience, wouldn't you like to practice that more often? So yeah, so step number one, remember one. Step number two, step into it. Step number three, take a mental inventory. Step number four, mentally rehearse having it in scenarios where you would like to. And then step number five is creative practice of harvesting these things because it's, it's um, not only do self-actualizing people have more peak experiences, but people who have more peak experiences are more self-actualizing. It works both ways. And so if you'd like to be self-actualizing, this is a great way to go about that. That's awesome. You know, it's interesting when you say having peak experiences, I typically would think, oh, that means you have to physically go on a retreat or have to physically have that experience, you know. But what you're saying, having the peak experiences is you can have it sitting right here when you step into that in your memory. A hundred percent. And that's and that's how yeah. all of our emotions work anyways. You, you you see someone give you the finger and you get angry. You see it's all mm. just triggers firing off old responses. Right. For the most part. How many how yeah. many of your emotions are new emotions? Most of the time right. we're just operating on autopilot. That's true. Right? I mean, just even remembering back to some angry event or whatever, then you get angry. Or you or see sad. somebody's face and uh, that yeah. reminds you of somebody else that you didn't right. like or that you loved, and now right. you feel that like and love for this new person. It's yeah. The way yeah, that yeah, we yeah. are working anyways all the time. Mm. And so what we're doing with NLP and neurosemantics is looking at how do you do the things that work and how can we do them more often. How do you do the things that you that aren't serving you to get you to your outcomes? And how can we find better ways of going about about doing that so we can get to our outcomes more quickly, more efficiently, and more more joyfully? Awesome, awesome. This is great. This is really great. I uh, just want to take a moment to thank Ida and Laura. Uh, I see both of them live here. They've written some some comments. So thank you so much, uh, Jason. Before we go, what is how do you what do you offer? Uh, people in terms of working with you and anything you want to share with my audience particularly? Sure. So, so um, 
I think the simplest way to follow me or to check me out is on my website, perceptionacademy.com forward slash knowledge. Um, I modeled that excellence from George forward slash knowledge, and I give away a lot of my free uh, knowledge there. So I've got videos on my YouTube channel, articles to read. So there's a lot of good free resources for people there to check me out and see what it's all about and learn more and continue going that route. Um, you know, the only way to really um, learn NLP and neurosemantics is it's highly experiential. And so the best way to learn it is to fly out and come to a live training here in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, where I am, um, that I offer like every couple of months, and you'll be able to see that schedule online. Um, although I know that, so, but I also know that that's a big kind of investment for somebody who's just kind of getting started. And so, well, that, that could, that could part, be part of like a vacation. I'll, I'll tell you, I would say Fort Lauderdale beach is my favorite. Well, I, I haven't been to a lot of the East coast or Southern beaches, but when I went to Miami beach, I'm like, ah, it's too crowded. Fort Lauderdale beach was awesome. It was great. It was my favorite. hundred so, percent. It's a great winter spot if you're somewhere cold. Um, that's you know. it. Yeah. Warm waters. Yeah. So, so um, also though, I have ways of working with people virtually. I have um, one webinar that I did with George Powell himself, which is a really cool introduction for NLP that goes a lot more into depth for somebody who's getting started. Um, and I've never really offered this before. So kind of like um, if you're interested in that, in that webinar, it's about uh, 60 to 90 minutes. I believe it's 90 minutes. It goes through what is NLP more in depth and, and how to detect your, 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 uh, one of your personality profiles. So uh, you'll be able to better understand yourself, uh, better understand others, be able to better connect with others, and then be able to better lead others or be led by others if that's more appropriate. And so that course I have available, it's 90 minutes, and I, could, I didn't even think this through, but if you're interested, you can email me about it. And we could just do it for 20 bucks, I think is a fair deal for that yeah. Um, yeah. as a great entry level uh, really cool webinar. And then lastly, um, if anybody's interested in scheduling a call with me, I do keep a couple of, of half an hour kind of discovery sessions open per week. Usually I, I save like two of those per week just to meet new people and to connect and see if we're a good fit. And so if you're interested in either learning more about NLP or seeing how NLP can help you to overcome the challenges that you're facing right now or to help you to achieve the goals that you're after or to just learn more about self-actualization, then you can also, uh, I'm sure you'll be able to find a way to email me or follow up on my website. Perceptionacademy.com, www.perceptionacademy.com. And I'll be sure to put uh, any other you know, info and links you want in the notes of the video. So Jason, thank you so much for showing up today and giving us some, some just a great intro to NLP and neurosemantics and this technique of harvesting peak experiences. Thank you, George. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks.